Coming up next, Curry's Corner. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of B1039, Up North Radio. Time for Curry's Corner with Pat Curry. Hey, Jen. Jen, what about me? And you too, not you, Pete. Pete Kent. Sponsored by Bab Ford in Reed City, Winger Insurance, and Big Rapids Pennzoil and Auto Repair. Oh, hey, good morning. Uh, good morning. Oh, Bobby, can there. you hear me all right? I can hear you just fine. I yeah. can't hear myself. Now, somebody, somebody, somebody's uh, squealing there. Fred, so. Is that too loud for you? Bad. Got my buddy Fred <laughs> Zimmerman on there. You might, want to, right? you might want to turn down uh, number three there. Number three, turn yeah, it down. If, if she's not going to be wearing headphones. Oh, you're not, Carol? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You like to hear yourself? I, yeah. So, All right, How about Bob? Can we hear everybody? There? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. You're how are you doing this morning? Good, we had a great right. weekend, Bob. Yeah, you did. Yep. Yeah, uh, the car National show. White uh, Day down uh, the graph is downtown. There you go, yeah. Uh, then I found out it was a car show. All those <laughs> white people down there. I thought, well, my God, they're finally getting a day. The ones that build it, Fred. I, I was probably uh, pretty excited. Uh, but anyway, we had a great car show. Uh, Dewey Parsons and company down there at River Valley uh, Car Club put on a great show. Connie uh, Kopnick from uh, uh, Conventions Bureau there helped support it, along with other sponsors. Uh, Noel uh, Restaurant was down there. I had her sandwich. Wow, was that good. Have you ever ate down there at Noel's? South Town, Bobby? Um, no, actually, I haven't. Yeah, very good you sandwich. Sit down. Anyway, uh, it was a great uh, great gathering. Uh, lasted most of the day. Uh, some great cars, vintage cars. Uh, some beautiful, beautiful cars. But anyway, beautiful people. It was just a real nice day. No problems at all. No hostility or nothing. So, That's a good thing. Well, so, Pride, uh, they had that. Yep. Enough said. The mayor was in I know, you don't care. There. Hey, before I forget <laughs> you, want, you want them to take the pride and, like, go back. They're dying breed, aren't they? Oh, well, maybe. Huh? Won't have any children. Yeah. No. There you go. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, You'll like I that. got Fred Zimmerman's <laughs> back with me today and Joe Basher on my right. And I got Carol over there. Uh, we talked about the history of Big Rapids last week, you know. And uh, last few years, I've, I've always kind of dwelled on that a little bit, loving to hear the history I I'd love to have Gary Wells on here someday, too, but uh, in Mars Navy. But Fred's been, last week we got talking after the show, which was an hour and a half. I said, Fred, and he started talking about more stuff. <laughs> and uh, the one That's I great. wanted uh, him to touch on was Frank Wheatlake. You know, uh, Frank Wheatlake, uh, Heidecker Wheatlake, wasn't it, Fred? George yeah, Heidecker. George? George Heidecker. Okay, George Heidecker. Wow, this makes me smile because yes. I guess I never knew that guy. I didn't know him. What well, what happened to him then? Well, I think he probably passed away. Passed on by this time, and I don't know if Wheat Lake ever bought him out or what happened, but but Wheat Lake. So he just were they partners at one time? Well, yeah, they okay. was. I know Frank Wheat Lake was an engineer for Power Consumers Power, and I think George was too, but. George Hyde. Okay. Up here. Wow. He was a nice guy. Yeah. What what year would that have been about, what would you say? Well, I told you yesterday the other day they yeah. was they was in that building there going up to Sweet Hill to begin with. Okay, now Sweet That's, Hill is I know where it's at, but tell people that don't know where Sweet Hill was. Oh. Or is, yeah. Well, it's just across the bridge right there on Paramar Castle, Sweet Hill. And that's where, well, I should back up here just a little bit, but that building is standing there where they sell carpets today. Billy Krupp, who owned that store on top of the hill, him and his two son-in-laws, Ray Ash and Mel Nutt, built that building to sell Tucker cars. They never sold a car. And, uh, and the story the story was that yeah. Tucker borrowed all this money from his stockholders and skipped the country. Oh, my Lord. So the building stood there, and Ford Bacon and Davis came to town when they built the pipeline from Reed City to Austin Gasfield. It was in that building. And uh, Wheat Lake and Heidecker moved in that building. But when I went to work for them people in 1958, it was right down there across from your garage in a Buck and Richards building is where they was at. Wow. And with from a, there they went to Reed City. Where the senior housing is now, uh, right? Right. So what took them to Reed City, you think? What, I mean, just uh, space? 
I, the graphics kind of helped them out. Top Taggart's headquarters was in there, too. Uh, um, what, I don't know, hear, really, Pat. There was probably a lot of things. and You know, I made the statement many times that not because I had anything to do with it, but Frank Wheatlake, I made the statement a lot of times that had these old farm boys around this country working for him, he'd have never made a go over. Right, right. Who were some of them farm boys, Fred? Huh? Like some of them, who, who were the, some oh, of the names, hell, just I a few. Know. Christ, <clears throat> like, all the... Stand with people? No. Durst, the Durst family... Lion. The Hall oh, family. Yeah, Gerst and hell, all the Halls. people out west of town lived up. Like, oh, yeah, the Kylings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they went up there, but his boy really has made a lot bigger, hasn't he? Oh, amazing. Yeah. You know, I... See, I, uh, you can... Uh, when I started out there for him, you know, he was trying to do the best he could, and he bought a lot of that old military outfit from a second. And I'll tell you, some of them trucks he had, you couldn't even drive them down the road. Really? And and what his main uh, business was power line, right? So oh, just yeah. the poles or the lines too? Well, they put the wire up. And Did they? Yeah. Hell, when I went to work for him, Pat, yeah. I hauled them electric poles all over the state of Michigan. Right, right. <laughs> what, what, did he have a lot of competition back then or not really? I mean... Well, it seems to me like a lot of things are going on. Businesses were growing, and so there was a big need for electric. Yeah, so you went into see, places. there wasn't a lot of people doing that. Right, right. That's right. And I uh, as the days went by, more people got involved. And see, the, when I started in building these big tower lines, like we built to Ludington, the only people who was doing that was Ellie Meyer. It was kind of unheard of, but. Mm-hmm. Finally, Wheatley got in. Yeah, Pat, someday you go to Morley Stanwood School. They're still there. I hauled them 100 foot electric poles that stand around there, lighted up that ball field down there, right out of Clay Avenue and Grand Rapids. Really? Well, how many years did you work for them, man? You started oh, when they started? I don't know. I finally. Decided to move on. Hell, I went to work for Myers and Foley and John Canton. Different people. Yeah, yeah. It was all through the union, you know. It was oh, all okay. through 876. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even know where that's at today. They moved out of Grand Rapids. I know that. Now, a kitty corner from... How come they never sold a car there, though? They built the place, and... That guy just left the state, did he, or what? No, it was Tucker Car Company. Yeah, I know, but he was saying... Why, well, he, he was from Michigan, I don't think. Oh, okay. I, All right. I never <clears throat> knew, but... Was that party store across the street from there, then? That's where Billy Krupp's store was. Okay, and then... Uh, and then Bonkowski got it at later. Yeah. Now, I remember the time on Sundays, oh, huh? Yeah. Bonkowski's? It was a, quite a deal, Aaron. Yeah. They had a heck of a business, didn't they? Well, they made a living there, I guess, all I know. What year do you think Wolverine Worldwide came in? Was they in there then? Well, no. Well, see, there was a furniture company that built that building. What did? A furniture outfit. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that What's the name of that? Rapid. Carol, get in on there. Carol, get over there. You know a lot of history, too, huh? Then Wolverine got there. Then the old railroad went by there, eh? Oh, steam engine. Yeah. Three back up. Then, uh, so people know too, you go over to uh, um, the railroad depot. You remember that well? There was two of them. There was one up there and there was one down on Maple Street. There was one by Mitchell, well, in Mitchell Creek Park. Mitchell Creek Park. Yeah. There was. Well, it wasn't up there that far, Joe, but it was in that vicinity. Huh. But the one that come from Woodville. Uh, oh, yeah, I can remember the trestle across the river there. goes into Hanchett's. That yeah, one. but, Pat, there was, another, there was another thing here I'm going to tell you about. The old P came on a white cloud in Woodville. Oh. Up through. Yeah. 
Crossed 131 right there where the high school is today, where the old high school. Okay. That right. PM Depot is still standing in Big Rapids yet today. Really? That's right there back of the A&W root beer stand. Oh, is that right? That's right. PM Depot. That train used to leave there. Went right across about where the river walk is and went up over the top of the river and headed for Rodney. Mm. By the middle school, which is the middle school now. Right. right. That See, the they, they tore them tracks out there and uh, probably about in the end of the war. But uh, I know my dad bought a quarter of a mile of her up by Rodney. Mm. <laughs> For how much money, I wouldn't have any idea of it. Went out there and prayed them out of the ground with a crowbar. Right. Then, and then, has there always only been two bridges in Big Rapids? One on as far as I Maple and Pier Marquette? Yeah, they were both, uh, uh, they were you never see, covered bridges, though. See, there was another dam in Big Rapids besides the one they tore out back in Cash and Carry Lumber. Never knew that either. Yeah. Where that dam was. Really? That hmm. was the lower dam, they called it. Yeah. And you know, you know, Pat, I worked with Jimmy Knapp. Well, we tried to do this. Fred, talk a little bit more into the microphone, would you? There you go. Yeah. Well, we tried to do this <laughs> remonumentation here with Big Rapids. We got a pretty good job done, but someday you ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Walk down there over the top of that river bank and look at the buildings was built along that river. At some time, I don't know what they were or anything else, but... A lot of buildings there, eh? Oh, the big cement the foundations, foundations are there. Huh. Seeing uh, where the cash and carry lumber company is today, hell, that was Ward's Mill. There was a big flooring mill there. That's where the tracks went right in there, didn't they? Tracks come right across the highway or the road out there for a mile. Hell, a lot of times you'd come to town, Hanson's was the same way. Yeah. You couldn't even get down the street there. That train come across the Trescent. Back right across the road. Hmm. Yeah. What's interesting, all the railroads, all, except for the, the main one, uh, you don't see a trace of them anymore. You don't no. see where they used to be. Uh, after they tore them out, they leveled it all out and uh, and brought it back to what, the way it was. The see, the other the other floor and mill was in town, Pat, was up to the Jones and Green. And the only thing that's left of that when the fire came was, well, just... The east east of the rails and trails right there. That was Jones and Green's office. Do you? Gaynell Cluster and Herb Worry run that. Okay. Is that Gaynell Mitchell? Correct. Yeah, Correct. he lives across from Taggart's there. Oh. She's yes. a pretty nice lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, uh, my Aunt Margaret DePew worked for her. Huh? Margaret DePew worked for her. Clean Pro- Carl used to go. Yeah. I think he did her hair at the uh, end of her life. Yeah. She had a lot of history there, didn't she, Carol? Did you know her, Carol? Yeah, she used to ride her horse Diablo over around the neighborhood when we lived over on the east side. Jigolo was that horse's name. Did she keep it right there at the house? No, she kept it over there at the lumber yard. Oh, really? It burned up there in that fire. Yeah. We had a lot of industries come and gone, haven't we? Some greens, too, where um, later they had a body shop there, um, Charlie Holt's body shop. Oh, Charlie. You know, yeah. Charlie, get a little bit closer to the mic. Okay. You know, Pat, you was asking me the other day what kind of businesses dominated this community. And the farmers had something to do with it, but I think really when you come right down to it, probably the furniture factories. Really? Yep. Hood and Wrights, there was Hood that and one. Wrights. And then later the Share company. Shops and... No, because the generation, they, they just sold out? Or? Well, I think they just lost a demand for stuff, you know. It was shipped in here from overseas, a cheaper brand of stuff. And now, I know, uh, remember the Knowles Bowl Factory? Now my dad worked there. That little building's still there, eh? Fred Knowles and Ernie yep. Lee. Yeah, very good, Fred. I, the only reason I know those names is that's Penny's great-grandfather sure. and uh, her uncle. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Fred ended up going to Hillsdale, and he has, uh, his family to this day has a... Uh, that Fred Knowles. Uh, that Fred Knowles come down here from the UP. 
Is that right? That's where he was from. Yeah. Made, I think we still have one of them, wooden bowl. We had some of them at home. You know, you know, Pat's amazing, but mostly the... They use beech trees to build them bowls out of. Really? There was a lot of people worked there. Hell, her dad worked there. Yeah. He sanded them bowls there for so many cents apiece. Right. And they, uh, uh, beech trees here then. Back well, in the that's what they cut. Yeah, yeah. Had crews in the woods here with a cross cut saw, you know. There was no chainsaws back in them days. Fred, I, I know, uh... We had a lot of logging industry back in the day, didn't we? The what? Logging industry. You, you were in the logging industry a little bit, weren't you? I know oh, you were. yeah, but that was years afterwards. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, this was a big... Well, that old set of logging wheels sat down here. Yeah. Somebody shoved over the bank and ruined. That's what happened to them. But once the dams came in, there there was no more logs that traveled by the Well, river. they couldn't. Right. Well, right. the dams were built in 1906, I think, around that area. Probably. And the logging industry had dissipated. It was pretty much gone. But they see, been, uh, did you, uh, deforested, especially after the Chicago fire when everything just yes. left and, and, and chipped everything see out. See, them pine trees stood here in this country, Pat, uh, brought a lot of people from other countries here. Yes. That's how they came here. The Zimmermans, probably, too. I've often wondered... I probably will never find out anymore, but I often wondered who these logging companies bought this timber. Right. And I'm sure there wasn't no deal like it is today. Right. Right. See, the biggest, the biggest sawmills was here, supposedly, was down here to Turnbull Lake. Really? Right yeah, was the yeah, I was a huge mill right there because the railroad went right by Turnbull oh, yeah. Lake too. Yeah, from well, Woodville. I remember Jack Taylor or somebody back in the day told me they used to uh, herd sheep. Did your family have sheep, Carol? We have Fred. My Dumbledore dad did wife. later out there on Bajornson Street. Right. I right. can tell you something yeah. about that yeah. story too. Okay, go. Right out here, west of town. Yeah. Everybody calls the sheep ranch out here. Yeah. There's 95 percent of them people don't even know where that sheep ranch. Is. I don't either. I don't think tell I'm you, about to learn. I'll tell you where it was. All right. The east side of that bordered up against my granddad's 160 acres, and that original sheep ranch never came any farther than the south side of 18 Mile Road, and it went west there to four times. And my Uncle Morris and Tom Ty, they done this. But they built that page wire fence all the way around that 640 acres for two people by the name of Shell Horns and Hawkins from Chicago and had them sheep. Now, yeah. there was no pines back then, right? No. That was all they land. Were cut off. It was sandy oh, land, too, right? Oh, well, just loomy. June berries and witch hazel. But then why would they raise any land there? Must be. So. And you know, I don't know if I could find any more or not, Bet, but right down below Granddad's going down that hill on the nest side of the road, there was a great big cement water tank them people built on the side of that bank to water them sheep. There was no water on that ranch. No. No place. Wow. Never till you got to the side. fence, just went through it. Right. But supposedly, the last herd of sheep was in that ranch out there, was drove out of there in 1927. Huh. Brought right into town here and loaded on the train. Right. Now, why Why do you think that? What, just the what? family didn't want to do it anymore or what? Why, well, tell you what happened to it. Uh, they lost a place on back taxes, took that over originally, and later wow. the government got it. Yeah, now it's a national forest, right? Well, it Was yeah. part of your land that you own there, Carver's, was that part of the sheep ranch? No. Okay. No. So I just told you that yeah. ranch never came any far on the south side of 18 Mile Road. Okay. you got to uh, go right out here. Right, right. That ranch never was on the north side of that 
So no, oh. it's too far east. Okay, Andy no. Cassidy's just past Andy. Well, you right gotta get out. Down. Yeah, we're past Cassidy's. Let's see, that's where my granddad had that 160 yeah. acres there. <clears throat> yeah. That ranch started right there below the. It was a big gate right there. Mm. Went into that ranch. Well, that's, they say that was all uh, land there, and then the government planned those trees, then, eh? In 31 or 2. In the yeah. WPA thing or whatever. Impression Day, CCC. So yeah. is that guy that owned part of Hawkins, is that how they came up with Hawkins, Michigan? Was that family, do you know, was that... Part of that. Well, I don't know about that story, Pat. I don't know well, if some people well, ever had any relation here. Right. I'll be darned. I know a lot of names come and go. You know, uh, touching about family and stuff. Oh, and, uh, I guess. Well, uh, Matt Burns was your cousin, right? He was what? Eddie and Denny Burns. Matt yeah. Burns. Cousins to you? Yeah. Now, how how was that? You guys, mothers or dad? Your Tell me how you're related. Your how dad. Do, how do I want to tell you? Brothers and sisters married brothers and sisters. How it happened. Oh, Adam and Matt married Same sisters. Thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. And, hmm. I don't know. You look a lot like Matt. That's why I brought his name. Oh, up. I've, been a, a I've been accused Jesus that a Matt. lot of times. <laughs> Those boys were uh, colorful people, you might say. Uh, I remember back when I was a kid uh, working for my dad they had Ron's Bar down there on Forestville Street, which is still standing there. Did you go there that much, Fred? No. You weren't much of a drinker, were you? Not much. Hunting fish, right? You did most hunting fishing? Not a lot of that. But your cousins hunted a lot year-round. The Burns boys, didn't they? They were hunters, too, weren't they? Supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I got to butt in here and say WBZX oh, Big yeah. Rapids oh, at 9 o'clock. Half hour. Hey, yeah. uh, listen, I, I think that... Uh, All right, we'll do that and we'll take a break for our sponsors and we'll be back in just yeah. a few. I'll Good. be 103.9. Yeah. I was really concerned about something. What's that? I went home and I called Bob Horn. Yeah. And Bab there. Okay. The mechanics is all going to stay. The service department is there. But supposedly they're going to sell used cars. Yep. Yep. But you can still go there like I do and right. get what I need. Body shop. Yeah, it's Good. A, uh, Bob was in the other day at the gas station and he said exactly the same thing, Fred. That Fox Motors bought them and they're <laughs> going to continue high quality in the service department. They're bringing Ford techs up there, automotive uh, techs, and uh, body shops still going to roll. So that'll, that'll keep Reed City rolling uh, pretty good. Hopefully, maybe someday they'll get back into a brand new Never store. know. But you know, I, uh, history is part of history. And uh, Bob, I guess Bob is going to retire, ain't yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. He's More gonna, or less. Uh, yeah. Well, you bought a lot of Fords over the years, haven't you? Oh. Lordy. But that. 72, I think, that green, no, what color? You always had black. Black truck. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. You like black, don't you? Doesn't show the dirt. No, black does show the dirt. You should have went with white, Fred. But anyway, talking about trains again. Carol alluded to the fact that we had a wooden water uh, tank up there on the north end of Big Rapids, right? By where was it? Yeah, that right term? across John's Market John's at that time. Yeah, so... Uh, that would carry water for the trains? Right, and the trains would stop and they'd be so long that they'd go all the way down to the lower depot down there on Maple Street. And when we were walking to school, we'd have to wait until the train moved to get across the track. Wow, and then you said some didn't, though, huh? Some didn't. Some of the neighbor kids would crawl underneath. They'd get impatient. <laughs> but Oh, my Lord. What was carried on those trains back then, Carol? Did you prohibition I don't back know. They had coal they dropped off at, um, coal? at God Bowles and that at wow. that time. Where'd they get the coal out of? Down south? Way down? Kentucky, so. probably. Really? See, God bolts come in there from Rodney. Yeah. yeah. When right. the old train left here, the PM, okay. wasn't going to Rodney. They moved in here and built that building over there. Yeah. And then, uh, just talking about the God bolts here, brothers Lauren and Wendell. But I anyway. think they're dead. Yeah, I think they're right. Rodney, I think and, they're and dead. And then, of course, then they stopped hauling to Rodney, so that's why they bought in Big Rapids. Correct. Uh, yeah. Do you know uh, Betty Godbolt was a dear friend of mine, went to church with her a lot, sat in the same pew, 
And when she lost Wendell, uh, she, I stopped out and saw her in later years at her house there, and she gave me a little history on her. She, she met Wendell of Tri Lakes. They had, each one had family cottages there. She kind of fell in love with Wendell, but then her dad wanted her to go to college, so she went off to college in Chicago. That's where they're from. She ended up marrying a guy down there, never saw Wendell again. And all the years she was married, and then I think she had two kids, and then her husband died. And she came back up, this was a long time ago, he died. And she came up to the family cottage, and Wendell was there. And he goes, I was praying that someday you would come back. Anyway, he says, I got something for you. He went down to a jewelry store. Who owned a jewelry store back then? Do you guys remember? I don't, I don't know who it was. There was um, what was his name? Was it Rogers? No, it was before that. Okay. Uh, but anyway. Scholes had one. And Robles. bought a ring and went out there and proposed to her, and they married, and the rest is history. Yeah, pretty nice. But anyway, going back to the railroad, uh, it was quite a long train back in the day. And how far north did they go then? Do you know? Did it go to Traverse City or UP? or? Went Kirk the Straits. Did it? Yeah. And I yeah. guess back in them days, see, the car ferry was going across the strait. They loaded them trains. Wow, man. Isn't that amazing? You know, you was... That was like the Badger then, where the Badger went across back and forth oh, that way. Oh, well... So this went up to the UP. It was bigger yeah. than that. They were smaller. Oh. You're talking about... You're talking about pad hunting and fishing. I never will forget it, but... I went with a gang of guys when I was 13 years old to the UP. Deer season. Thought I was off the end of the earth. <laughs> I bet Would you dead. believe? Yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to say something about this, but I hadn't better. No, go ahead. Say it. Anyway, they talk about these hunting and fishing days we got here today. It's all gone. Yeah. All over a dollar bill. Right. Yeah. And they... They ain't done anything any good. No. But would you believe to cross that boat on the strait for 24 hours to go up there deer hunting? Wow. That's how many people was doing that. Wow. And you know, I never believed in this. The hunting seasons and the bag limits we got out here today, it's ruined everything. All over a dollar bill. That's all it's amounted to. Yeah. And you know... I don't know offhand how many million in Michigan, but it ain't necessary. Yeah. And you know, I had a nice young lady come to the Spear House on Pecker Lake. She sat there for quite a while, just to these stories I was telling her, but Ed and Martha Peterson's cabin was, she wanted how long ago I'd seen that lake. I Well, 75 years ago. <laughs> Lake is still standing right there today. She was an awful nice young gal. Angela Greenway is her name. Wow. And she told me she was going to come back and see me. She said she didn't talk to very many people who was 85 years old. Wow. You know, uh, I, uh, talking about DNR and animals and stuff, uh, Mrs. Cole was her name. I was 13 years old. Lied my age to get the paper out from the Pioneer the papers up every day and delivered to 198 customers third ward. One of them was Mrs. Cole and, and I was 13 now, mind you 12 actually. I believe she was 93. She lived in the block between Waterloo and Pier Marquette and that big, it's a blue house now, but it was a Victorian house, big one, <clears throat> wrapped around porch. She used to tell me when she was a kid, she growed up there, when she was a kid across the street was all woods. It's all the way to the sheep ranch. I'm sure she you're goes, right. Mother wouldn't let us out at night because there's wolves in them woods. <laughs> Now, uh, do you remember as a child, uh, what kind of animals was there alive? Did you, did you have wolves back there? Coyotes? No. Uh, no. Badgers? There wasn't even any coyote right. here. Right. No. In my younger days, we I hunted, knew. we hunted fox. This is my uncle. I was about, I don't know, 10, 11 years old when I started hunting with them guys. Now, when you hunted, did you take the fur out to Pretty Lake, or who took the fur from you? You know, believe it or not, them fox back in them days had a $5 bounty on them. Right. 
Wow. He took him up to the sheriff's department. <laughs> they punched all and so you got the five dollars from the state. No, was that obviously there was a lot of fox back then? Oh yes. yes. Yeah. They set on every stone pile there was. Wow. I always wondered, Fred, if the well, reason for that wonder, Joe, we're talking over here. No, I'm only kidding you. Go ahead. Okay, Pete. Um I always wondered if <clears throat> the reason how many fox farms there actually were. That's how that yeah, happened, Joe. Hudson's? Supposedly, Hudson's. Hudson's. Yeah. Down south of Big Rapids where Jim or Fred Smith lived, Barn Hill. That was Barn oh, Hill's Fox one, Farm. Out the Lewis's. Yeah. yeah. When I and you know, kid, they claimed, yeah. that old uncle of mine claimed that there was a fox they called a Samson. And uh, he was actually a different color. But them ranchers didn't want them Samsons. It wasn't worth nothing. They turned them loose. Oh, that's, that's how they claim all them farms got here. Why them? Hell, there was them. nothing. There was nothing in the spring of the year when a spring started coming. You yeah. might see six, eight of them sitting on a stone pile. Yeah. Right? Wow. Ernie so, Holcomb. What did they do with the fur then? Nothing. They didn't, they didn't take... Well, the fox out. farms did back then. Oh, yeah, no. uh, but they, they, they were worse skinning. All right, now, uh, coon. Did you, you used to hunt a lot of coon? Did you ever eat coon? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, we did do some... Hell, we ate everything back in them days to <laughs> survive. Know. Right, right. And you know what, what amazes me, Fred, is, though, uh, you guys are adventurous as heck. I know that. But uh, you could afford to go to UP. And you the money family. You spent twenty five dollars to go up there and back home for a week, you spent a lot of money. Yeah. How long did it take you to make twenty five back then? Oh. Well, if you was good at trapping, believe it or not, yeah. you could sell a rat hide here for two dollars and a half, <laughs> more than they're worth today. Right, right. A good mail bank was forty. Right. And you could work it. Really? For 75 cents an hour. Right, right, right. Now, uh, so that's what your family mostly all did, right? Oh, yeah. Farmed. And who'd you sell co uh, your milk to, your dad's milk, when he milked back in the day? The what? The creamery. Your dad's milk. That's where we originally went down to B.A. McGill's. So out of the creamery. And then later, cheese company, the guy by the name of... Fred Williams used to come there and pick that milk up. Right. I got to um, tell you a story about this. Yeah. He came there to pick the milk up one morning. Wanted to know if I wanted to go for a ride. I said something to the old man. I said, do you care if I go? No. Where is he going? I said, I don't know. But he still he'd bring me back. That was the first time I ever saw Chippewa Lake, and I thought I was looking at the Atlantic Coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh my! Did he haul? Was it? Did he have a truck or horse drawn? No truck. Do you have a truck? Yeah, back. Yeah, then. you know, I've often thought of that man mm -hmm. taking them ten gallon milk cans and throwing them up in that yeah. truck. Yeah. As far as I know. He's got some relation up around Reach City. If I remember right, that man died pretty young. Really. What the heck? I'll it? tell you, you know, them 10-gallon milk cans, right? They weighed 100 pounds a piece. Right. So when I'm up in that truck. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It yeah. was not an easy life. Boy. No, no. Of course, nothing was back in them days, you know. You done whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. No, you know, we talked about Townline Lake. That's where you grow down. Our side of it. Right. So, did you? what was the name of that Townline Lake before it was town? They had another name for it, you say? I don't think so. I never so heard of it. Town Line? Okay. Why Why do you think it was called Town Line? I mean, okay, that's why I wondered. That's right there between Colfax and Grant Township. Right. Okay. See, that township line goes right there behind the old man's barn. Right. Okay. So there's there's more green, of a township line. Pat, there's then. Green, Big Rapids, Colfax, and Grant all comes together right. right there. Right. So that's the Town Line. That's why you called it, or they yeah. called it Town Line Lake. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, growing up, you milked it, Carol. We didn't ever had any. We had sheep. Carol Douglas. But I, we, I didn't ha wasn't there much when we moved out of Majorson because I was almost 17. So, I didn't live there in a couple of years before I got married. Okay. So, 
while you were there, though, your mom and dad made a living shearing pick. Uh, no, my dad worked for pine shops. Oh, he did? Yeah. A lot of people worked there, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the only place there was other than Hans and some Benedicts. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day, everybody worked right in there, didn't they? Oscar Johnson the and uh, Bob Scott ran it. Okay. And he worked there. I yeah. think that's the first time he made a dollar twenty-five an hour. That's pretty good money back then, eh? Right. Yeah, I was going to tell you something here, Pat, about Hansen's. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't remember and probably never knew. But Joe's... Where would he been? have been? Yeah, my grandfather. Yeah? Would you believe... I don't know what year this would have been. I know it was in the war time. And they were, Joe and his mother, I think, was working the hatchets. Yes. I know they were. I think Uncle George did, too, Collie. Well, Joe did. And Uncle young Joe, Joe, after he got out. But you who would believe this? In Straight Street Hardware. Yes. There was a streetcar <laughs> stood right there along that street is where them people lived in the wintertime. Really? Snow would get seven, eight feet deep going in that driveway up there. You couldn't get in there. Remember where Northland oh, Pizza yeah. was, yeah. Pat? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That streetcar stood yeah. there. And they weren't insulated, were they? Well, I guess not. So I they don't heated know. that with coal, probably? My grandmother. My grandmother would come to town on Sunday morning. Always had to stop there and see Annie on the way home, yeah. which would have been her daughter. Well... Yeah, yeah, my so grandma aunt. That's the other thing I was going to touch. I remember when I was a kid, my mother every Sunday took us to a different sister or brother's house. You guys did a lot of that back in the day. No, that's yes. what you done, freaks. House, yeah. They don't do that too much anymore. Oh, don't do it at all. Well, you know, back in the days, back in the days, you know, her dad played the fiddle there until he was. Ninety some years yes. old. Yeah. You know these wow. people used to have these house parties. Yeah. Every right. Saturday night. How you yeah. roll up a keg of beer and people go in there. <laughs> Grange halls. Right. On every section just about. Carol, tell me a little bit about your history growing up. What was the name of your elementary school you went to? I went to Fifth Ward, which is um Eastwood now, and there was a big red school that stood on the corner there. I can remember that school, yeah. So you were right next to the pickle factory. Was that there then or not? Yeah, the pickle factory yeah. was there. That was big. Pickles were big in Big Rapids. At the time and we used to have a lot safe... of people raised them. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, uh, they got to the point you couldn't get the Mexicans to pick them for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really? True, Pat. Is that right? Yes. Why didn't they want to pick them? Splinters? Wow. Well, I'm just curious. Something happened about the laws, and they had to build housing for them people right. to stay in, and this and that. And it just, Pretty like good. everything, Pat, back in them days, got to do it. Yeah. Hell, everybody raised pickles. Yeah. Right up here, around the corner, right here in the airport. Tony Mondrilla raised them things for years. Wow. Uh, we lived out on Cottonwood. Bob Thomas, our neighbor, raised acres acres and the Mexicans. if you wasn't raising pickles you was raising string beans yeah right okay. and my grandpa baumick's brothers and him and his brothers owned the woodville heinz pickle outlet so the whole neighborhood took their pickles to the old woodville heinz store and then and they before them, that then they joe, shipped them by train in the big rapids before that joe they claim before my day and time but they claim that depot there in Woodville bought all the potatoes was growed in that country out there. Wagon put on the train there. Yeah. Yes. Well, Carol, tell us a little bit about your east side growing up. Well, we had to walk to school every day. And who had the stores? Did Halls always have? Halls had a store there in Eichenberg's, and then when Halls went out, Eichenberg's took it over. And then there was a three bars over there on that side. There was Margaret Ann's across from the um, Jones and Green that stood right there on the east side of the Later, um, a lady by the name of Jenny Lake had a used clothing store in there. Oh, yeah. And then Ben Holt owned that, and then he went down and built the new red rail that was down by your gas station there where the chair factory used to be at the right. east end of the bridge. Yeah. And there was a... Um, Arts. 
Arts Tavern was in there. And Art Conklin. Yeah. 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 So they were related to Eichenberg's, right? Right. Yeah, Mrs. Hall, I think, was an Eichenberg. Oh, yeah. I think is how it was. I know they owned all those buildings. They had two stores in there, right? We tore the one down, which was next to Wild Rose. There was a stone house there. Then yes, Eichenberg's yeah. had a house there. But Halls lived in the back of the store. Right, yeah. That's yeah. where they lived. Well, there was a lot of history over there, wasn't there? Yeah. And then the Red Rail was what? It, what the Red Rail? The air factory, the sure. oh, furniture factory there. Is some the, of that building still there that was... No. No, that's all gone. all gone. That was a three-story building, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That, that, that was a real tall one. And we used to have to walk across that Maple Street Bridge when we went to the high school, and they wouldn't let the kids in the city carry their lunch at that time. So we had to walk home at noon and back again, and then again at night. And when it was really icy and cold and windy, walking across that Maple Street Bridge, was back then girls could not even wear slacks to school. You had to wear dresses. The cars went by, splashed mud on you. I mean, it was a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was there uh, any anybody lose their life in the river back in the day? Not and that I remember. No, so they had more common sense back in the day. Eh? Right, I know I somebody so. tried to. Right? I know somebody tried to. Really? Yeah. Who was he lived over there someplace, and name was Neymar. Okay. I think it was Raymond. And their dad always told the story... He jumped off the Maple Street Bridge. Whoa. I don't know if that's there anymore or not. That island stood right underneath the bridge there in the middle of the river. Yeah, I remember it, yeah. He jumped off the bridge there and hung up with these overhauls of the tree down there and that. <laughs> <laughs> but my lord, my mother, so he didn't commit suicide. He tried, but he couldn't do it. <laughs> that's about what amounted to. My mother, <laughs> my mother, who was Fred's first cousin, told me that story. Oh, yeah. I'll be darned. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what else, Carol? I mean, well, and then there was a Michigan cigar that was next, oh, just yeah, east yeah. of your gas station yeah. there. Which, and my grandpa, uh, Harry Nash, worked there. Oh, yeah. And um, Fox ran the. Tony. Tony Fox, yeah. 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 But it was Nemers before that. But right? Nemers had the hardware next to it. Yeah. Right. This and the Middleton's? East. Where was Middleton's in? They Did were they some relation. They were relation to Nemers. I think they yeah. ran there together. Well, all them Nemers was all related. Yeah, I used to was Albert, Bill, yeah, Art, and next the one to that had the brickyard out there east of town. Yeah, and people been going on to. I didn't tell you, but I will. That old store up there to Billy Krupps. You know, back in the day before electricity. You went down there every night, got a block of ice to put in the ice box. Oh, really? Yeah, they cut that ice out there in that yeah. brickyard. Put it in that building right there. Ken Johnson had one right down there, too. Put a layer of ice in there, melting in the summertime. Right. What did you guys do at home, then? Did you cut it out of the lake there, town line? No, we went to town, got a block of ice. Or right. Hell, it was used as a cold night house. You didn't need no ice. Right. I can, remember, <laughs> I can remember George Tugan, Tugan telling the story. They used to cut black ice in that lake behind him, Hungerford Lake and Turnbull oh, Lake. Oh, I'm sure they did. Town. <laughs> wow. Yeah, to sell. How many sisters do you have, Fred? Huh? Brothers and sisters. Just two. John and Charlie. Three uh-huh. of the boys. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. They all uh, pretty much around here, you got all the kids, aren't they? grandkids and stuff. We talked about Calvin and Nate, kind of neat that they're both out there taking over the farm, isn't it? I talked to him last night. Calvin? Yeah. He was going mowing the yard. Yeah, they are. Well, hey, hey, you know, that was just natural for that family to be like that. That's all you knew. Yeah. Right. You see his stonework, that's a lost art, but if, if people never get a chance it's their loss, uh, a Kelvin built a nice stone wall out there at his place. You don't see that anymore. And you know, built- uh, you know, one of the best stone mason was ever in this town right here was a guy by the name of Doug. Really? Ah. Hey, Fred, talking about that, the place I bought, you know, the abandoned, oh, by Waldron Way, the person that owned that was Verdoni. He built Lincoln School and the old. High school, which is crossed. Well, I'll tell you, now. the you stonemason was here in my day and time. 
He built that house for my uncle there on Ryan Creek. Yeah. His name was Bill Wixon. Yeah. He was from Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. Drove a 1929 Model A pickup. I can see him yet. Right. And he was an old man in my yeah. day and time. See, Verdoni passed away, I think, in 50-something. See, Hank Spicer. Hank, oh, yeah, the whole neighborhood. He done there. that. Yeah, I remember Morris Hank Withers, Bill. our whole neighborhood. You know, I remember old Bill, there was a trick to that, right? You know, I was, I was just a young kid. He had a, similar to a splitting ball, you'd use to split wood today. And he used to bust them stones. And you know, would you believe it? If you know what you're doing, and you hit one of them stones in the right place, it'll just fall apart like a block of wood. Yeah. <laughs> Hank Spicy, stones have grain just like wood, Joe. You got right. to you got to be able to see. Well, it. back then, uh, those guys were truly architects and engineers. And never had an education. Well, they're how artists. they built the houses that they did today, yeah. you couldn't build a house like that. I don't want to talk about it too long, Fred, but I want your. Uh, and put on roads. I mean, uh, I was just talking to Mayor today, Mayor Gunter. Uh, we really got to put some tax dollars into our roads. Our roads are in pretty bad shape. I mean, I go on Pine or downtown there in that back alley's bad. You got Steve Kramer, the money he spends in taxes for farm and garden over there on the fourth. That road's terrible in his place, right in front of his place. They ought to yeah. be ashamed of themselves. Why do we need something like that in this day and age? Yeah. Why this town's have... got all kinds of money. But, you know, like 220th, that's not very old, and that's all falling apart. It amazes me the money we spend on roads, and they don't hold up. Uh, you go to Canada, and them roads all hold up. I don't know what we're doing wrong here, if it's the crown, or if the ditches, or what. I ain't no road man, but... I'll tell you Lord. one thing, Pat. Mm -hmm. I can tell you a little bit about that. Yeah. you got to know how to build a road grade before you put the road on it. Correct. Yeah. You're going to keep it there. Myers, you're right. You're probably right. No, actually, I am no, right. Yes, you are. Freddie Myers and crew <clears throat> did my West Avenue in front of my place from State Street up to my place and then picked up again. They screwed up. They didn't. Fred didn't, but the spider in. And then they picked back up, up by the cemetery. That road is beautiful. It's holding up really well. But those boys worked every night. I watched them out there watering that road, moving that gravel and put a good base on it and got it nice and hard for them to Would pay. you believe? Yeah. Would you believe? I was running a grader from across the county road convention in 1968. Mm -hmm. the really? And there was a crew come down here by the name of Dan Parr from Luther. <laughs> wow. And that road stayed there for years and years and years. How about that spring up on top of the hill? Well, he cut that all out of there. Oh, Lord, that used to be a bump, oh. didn't it, Fred? I remember there was people a, used to get There was going. a bump on that road during the spring of the year. You had to be going easier and throw your head right through the road. Did, did I remember that coming from Aunt Margaret's. Oh, my Lord. My yeah. mom would say, hold on. <laughs> but, you know, the other thing is I just want people to realize. But, you know. Go ahead. You know, Pat, there's one thing, you know, people grow sensible back in them days. The speed limit was 25 mile an hour, 150, 60, 70. Right. right. Don't stop at a stop sign. Don't stop at 80,000 ton trucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 80,000 pound trucks. You know, when it comes right down to it, you know, if somebody wanted to, there could be a lot of changes made right here in this community. Yeah. How, and it how wouldn't take it? much to do it. Well, tell us how to do it, Fred. Uh -huh. What would you do? What I'd do, yeah. I'd back this town up here about 50, 60 years and start over. It's like the old, you know, Sheena knows more about that place of town than I do. I never knew down about the south end of Big Rapids. Never seen it. You got farther than Judson's Hardware <laughs> as far as you went. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the AMP really? store yeah. was up there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. As far as we ever got up there, you went to that building was you up there to pay the electric bill Where back was that in them at? days. In uh -oh. Summers. Right oh, next to Brown's Barbershop right in that area. Well I was across from the north of that. 
Oh, north of that. North of Browns, but it was. Where Conway's got was the right music there. shop. See, when oh, I was okay. a young kid yeah. in town, Pat, that Browns barber <laughs> shop was underneath the bank right there, the Citizen State Bank. Okay. Old Ford and Doyle Brown. Run. And then Gary Wells and Charlie Miller got in so, there later. Yeah. yeah. I remember going there. Yeah. <clears throat> they're, they're about your age, weren't they, aren't they? Oh. Gary and... Oh, uh, yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. There was two barber shops across the river there by you. Right. Yes. There was Nick Napopoulos that had one across the street in that building next to where the, the restaurant was. Where okay. Cotton's had a restaurant. Yeah. Right. Yellow House is now. I told you about him yeah. the other day. Yeah. And then yeah. Glenn McGuire had that one later. Okay. And then there was a Holland Furnace Company that came in next to it. And at one time there was a license bureau right in that area. Right. Yeah. Right next on uh, Maple there. Mm -hmm. Stone House. Yeah, yeah, to it. You know, Fred. I know you'd like to go back. So would we all like to go back, but we can't. You'll uh, never see it happen. No, no. You know, and I kid either. And now that's such a big deal that uh, we're getting shoved up. You know what? But uh, I, I just don't have a problem with either race. But I wonder who, when it started, why would it start? I just don't understand because we've got some good people. They're black. We got great people. that are white. And we keep on putting ourselves down, and and uh, if you think about it, it's people like you guys that uh, yeah, and you know hard. both clans of them people. Yeah, some almost better than what you think. Right, right. Something yeah. else I want to ask you, seeing as how you got a gas station business, how come the gas is up to three dollars and sixty cents <laughs> this morning because the holiday is coming? Well, Who that, regulates this? Nobody? Uh, no, that's uh, regulated by the corporations. Yeah. Well, it? Div yeah, it is. It is. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. I try to keep it down, though. But uh, we don't talk on that job. subject anymore. <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. No, I won't. <laughs> no, it is. But uh, one thing I do want people to know, I was talking to Fred earlier, our, our mayor, right now as we speak, uh, there's a proposition going in for the county to charge you for a pop-up tent. Now, I don't know if it's thing over like a 12 by 12 pop-up tent, like going to the fair, you'd have to have it inspected or a wedding or whatever. No, that's what's coming up right now. They, they want to have, you have to have it inspected and you'll be billed $150 for a permit. See, here we that's are, right Pat, back to what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. About the DNR. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. They get in millions of dollars from the state yeah. You got to pay for license plate to go to a boat. Yeah. Boat license, snowmobile license. What is right. the deal with this? Yeah. And you know, when I started out deer hunting when I was 13 years old, a deer license was $3 and a half. Mm -hmm. And the deer season lasted for 15 days. What happened here? When you got a four month deer season, the fishing's all gone. They don't close the season. You catch all the produce. How could there be anything left? Right now. Yeah. The trapping's all gone, too. Yeah. Killed out, run over, speared, shot, whatever. But, and you know, it's about time, I hate to tell you this, but somebody ought to change something here if it's possible. Well, like I say, it's, it's always they're always looking for avenues for money. It's just like the plant that they want to put ah. in there. It's all about money. It should be about living, the care. Quality of life. Yeah. But this tent thing... I want people to get a hold of their commissioners. Now they might. Is that just a state just, level, Pat, or, or the county? Oh, crazy! The county. Bite it, get it, hit it in the bud right now. Yeah. Well, look at the before they look at the deal anything. down there, Pat. You know, we tried to. Matter of fact, I was one of the original deals in that thing. We tried to big rapids. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now. I done a lot of work down there, digging ditches with you a backhoe bet. and a grader, leveled that deal all out. And you know, we tried to, all we got her dad down there and a few musicians come down there to play some music to have the people have something to do. You know, we tried to people. Mm -hmm. We got stopped because it wasn't inspected. What's uh -huh. the deal with this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing right over the fairgrounds over here. St. Mary's Church had it. Yep. Right. Why? I know. Why? Why? Yeah, I know. I don't understand this. Oh, for the betterment of the 
society, we don't want anybody getting food poisoning. But yet, you go to the grocery store and look what you buy. And that's legal? No, I no. agree with you. Friend. No, it ain't. Yeah, Everybody I'm ain't. probably... I probably shouldn't be sitting here talking about <laughs> that stuff, but I'll tell you right now, I do not agree with it. No. I never did. Some yeah. people just trust our government to do what we're supposed to be doing, and that's watching out for ourselves and our friends and neighbors. But it's getting too big, and there's some people too think much. government They're always looking. They must have a think tank saying, how can we make more money? Exactly. Jeez, get a job. Right, Seth. Yeah. It's they used sad. to have that show on television, The Need for Greed. That's how these people must have got started. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what's sitting right here? Sitting right here where this building sat, and there was a restaurant set right yep. here by the name of the Fireside Restaurant. Yeah, I remember that. I can remember <laughs> the yeah. Beacon, right, yep. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maybe it was the Beacon. It was yeah, wild. Fireside was just a few yeah, could you, around yeah. the corner. Yeah, you should be. Down here, old Tommy Marmon had that. Had them cabins there in the little grocery store, right. sold Sinclair gas. Yeah. Right, right there at the corner of West Avenue, right? Well, it was right there. about where the Napa... Right. I yeah. part story right. today. I think you're right. right. Yeah. But you know, you know, back in them days, Pat, I don't think anybody had a business in this town, never got rich, but they all made them all by first name. Right. Hell, right. just like the people used to run the banks in town. Yeah, There's, you know them all by their first name. Yeah, and they knew if you, you want something. You went in there and talked to them. Changed now, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, hey, I know. sad. And you know what got this all started here? I have no clue. <laughs> Just came on fast, didn't it? What the officials? And that's what I tell people: uh, if you want to change it, get involved. And they look at me. Why don't you get involved? Well, I'm a little bit old. We need these younger people to get involved. And uh, we can change the world starting in Big Rapids. But if we allow our commissioners to charge us for pop-up oh, tent, that's what rid- more can you get? That's what ridiculous. What more are you going to do? You know, they're talking about uh, inspecting everybody's uh, septic tank and drain fuel cost for the inspection. It's another tax. What, what makes you think our drain fields aren't working? We'll tell you our drain fields aren't working. We'll put a new one in when it's clogged yeah, up. Yeah, yeah we'll the first person to know. To, the homeowner's going to take care of it, but more regulations, yeah. more dollars for the government. So and it starts right here in Macosta County. Right, yeah, Pat, you look the around. The- they're supposed to be over looking for us. Sometimes I wonder if they're really out looking for us. No, you know? they ain't. You look around this country when inside bathrooms came into existence. Before that, you went out to right. the outhouse. Right. What you done? Yeah. And you know, I would imagine, I don't know how many of them is left. But I know when them septic tanks was put in out here, a lot of them people had a barrel burying the ground yep. out here for a drain field. Put right. some stone in it and around it. And it worked. You it know, worked. county commissioner, that every three years, we shut it down. Yeah. District well, I hope 10 our commissioner now. shut this down, too, because it's ridiculous. Yeah. Of course, they'll say it's a state thing. Well, you know, oh, well, it's a state thing. we got to Well, do what it. is the reason, Pat, if you know... Why the reason that somebody can't stop this stuff? Well, they can if they get involved, and I think that's what. Well, you're but they won't right get now. involved. Well, you're right. Just Correct. like talking Correct. about what we're talking about right now, most people talk about what we want yeah. or what we should, what we'd, right. we'd like to see done. Brett, how stop. many years were you a township supervisor? Six. And you listened to the people. Yeah, you did. You well, wanted. I got to tell you something, Joe. Yeah. The first meeting I ever went to. Barton Township Hall. First, I got to tell you something else here first. Frank Wentland drove up to my place the morning after that election. This probably wouldn't happen like this today. Louie? But to run on a Democratic ticket back in them days in Barton Township was (laughs) unheard of. Right, right. I won that election up there. Well, you I'm won a Democratic because, ticket? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Oh, here comes Frank. Fred Zimmerman. Here comes Frank. Went and his brother told me, boy, Fred, he said, I'm glad to see you got involved in this politics, but he said, I got to tell you, he said, you're wrong on the wrong ticket. <laughs> and he said, I, you could be right, Frank. <laughs> and you know, that's the way things was done. Right. Yeah. Well, back then, a Democrat. It, it's well, a different Democrat today. Well, I, You're talking oh, Kennedy and Roosevelt Democrats. Crazy. 
My dad. And Democrat. you know, the reason I was a Democrat, hell, all them years I worked for electoral contractors, you know, the union right. backed all them. Sure. Right. And I got to tell you something, that's the reason I done that. But right. probably that wouldn't be that way today. Well, you're I don't know about it. That's what's nice about you. Well, I think people weren't, I don't think the division was that big. I've always said people in our area, my mother, with a Zimmerman, were Roosevelt Democrats, Kennedy, and that's not what it is today. Most most of us were the same people, don't matter what party. Didn't you were. make no we, difference. We didn't call us ourselves no. by a party. Franklin you know Roosevelt, and old G. Men and Williams. World. Yeah, we still got the best country in the world, but like you said, Fred, we're losing it. Sad, but it's true. Huh? Yeah, it's true. But I got anyway, one. I got one okay, more thing, go if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Grandma, great, my great grandma, your grandma Zimmerman. She was a batter. Bader. Bader. Okay. She lived on or had a place. Where was her house? By what? Down the road from Uncle George Collier, correct? She lived on the Mars farm when she was a kid. Okay. All right. My grandma always told me that house got moved and was ended up being Pat Curry's house right over here on West Avenue. Is that true? Do you remember that at all? Well, the one off the Mars farm got moved down there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But it wasn't the thing where Pat Curry's living. They said where it, Curry's living. Across the street? No, no. right up the same side, but okay. towards the fairgrounds more. Okay. So would that must have been Brinks, maybe? Well, I don't know that. A you know, there's something I always do. wondered about that. You know, them people moved that house off the Mars farm there. Yeah. Which is by Rice Lake, that's where it was. I off them two guardrails down there on that bridge by Uncle Fred Bush's. Hell, that was just a one lane yeah. bridge. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, those guys were pretty good engineers back and didn't even know. Well, it, didn't you they? know. <laughs> they could do things, couldn't they? See, that's just like the other day when Danny Hatch was here. You know, he never mentioned that. And I don't know. I imagine they know. His grandmother was married to old Ray. You got any idea where them people lived? Mm -mm. Right. Where they're at now? Old Jim Butler was her dad. You go around the corner right there by Burgess Lake going north. Yeah. Lived right there on the east side of the road. Oh. <laughs> the state took all that over when they got all that land out through there for nothing. For Haymarsh? Now you gotta now you gotta pay to use it. Yeah. Right. After you paid to use it to begin with. Right. I'll tell you one thing, Matt, I can't say one good thing about that DNR in the last forty years. I oh can, my lord. I get nothing. that. I understand. Yeah. And yeah. I imagine you realize that. You know, I like I will tell you. Because that lady came to my spear house and sat there for half, three quarter of an hour. She's a pretty nice woman. Yeah. We Angela good... Greenway. Mm. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've never seen her since. Well, I did, but I'd never talked to her. But, right. Yeah. She is but uh, nice. yeah. she understood what I was telling her. Yeah. No, I went on, Pat, to tell her about the, the fishing seasons. You never went fishing on one of these lakes for the 20th day of June. Huh. Hmm. The limit on them bluegills was 15. They had to be 7 inches long. I told her about that day right there. She said she never heard of such a thing. <laughs> I was go back and look on the DNR record to see if I ain't right. Yeah. Well, we got talking about DNR like Mike Beaumet. He's a good DNR here in town. But I don't know about state level, but... Yeah. Okay. All right, Fred. <laughs> I love you. Well, anyway, uh, we're getting close to 10 o'clock. Uh, Joe wanted to talk about the Hall of we'll Fame. We'll start the, uh, we'll have, the, have you the guys second half hour of the yeah. show here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we got a big thing coming up. You ever go to the all-timers game? Old-timers game, Fred? Carol? Hey. She wants to tell you about yep. something. Okay, about Carol. You're going to say this morning was there was this old guy in town um, by the name of uh, Wiley Nolan. Yes. And he used to have a cart and went up down the street and picked up garbage and he had a dog and he'd give the dog a ride. And if he got some change, he went into the 
the old Scott store or Devil's Court and bought candy that was in the bulk containers. And then he'd have a little bag of candy and he'd give it to all the kids on the street. Right. Nowadays, he would not be allowed to do <laughs> no. that. Nobody was out to. You know, Pat, I think if I remember right, I think old Happy got hit with a car in town, finally. I think you're right. I, I can't. wondered. They hit that I car. I really tell you the yeah. truth, but. Yeah, he used to walk the street. Where do you live? Right by the river? Down by Curry's Auto Parts. Curry's Junkyard. Oh, okay. Curry's. Curly's. Curry. Yeah. Curly's. Yeah. yeah. I think no. he ended. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know no, no about that. Yeah. But he I do was always know on the corner a lot of people. Old fountain. A lot of people lived in houses without floors. Oh, yeah. I remember that real well. Yeah. Charlie Fulmer Hauser, remember him? Mm-hmm. He's an old timer. Him and Happy were probably two of the old timers in town back then. Then old Matt Burns' his dad, they lived over on uh, Milton. Correct. He used to walk to town a lot, eh? Oh, every day. Billy huh? Goat Burns. Billy Goat Burns. How did he get that name, Fred? Do you remember? What's that? Billy Goat Burns. I never knew his real name. Well, I'll tell you how he got that way. (laughs) Supposedly, the Elks here in town was going to have some big venison roast of some kind. Apparently, he didn't happen to get one when he was supposed to, and... My relation, Joe's, had a billy goat down there tied up. They went down there and hit that billy goat in the head, took a skin to it, took it down there and sold it to the Elks. That's how he got that name. <laughs> really? I shouldn't be telling her what really happened to these people here. Right, uh, yeah. A little a wild body. time, a big rap. Right, yeah. <laughs> No, there's been a lot of great people in this community. We'll have you back, too. This has been a fast hour and a half going on, Bobby. Yeah. Appreciate your patience this morning, but a lot of history is being recorded right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. That's for sure. We'll have you back on again, Fred and Carol, okay? Yep. But uh, right now, I, I want to have Joe talk for a little eight minutes, Joe, because I like to leave by 10. But every year, uh, it started back years and years ago. I don't know how many years ago. But 35th. Annual Macosta County Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, 35 years ago, Norm Turner and that group, Jack Lewis started this. Uh, Rich Curry. Between, yeah, my dad, Rich, and uh, a few others, uh, probably Al Keenitz, I don't know. But uh, the old timers, and they were old back then, but they were athletes, played uh, the Big Rapids, raised money for the uh, fireworks, I believe. But anyway, uh, Bob Horn and Tom Horn had a lot to do with it, and they uh, gathered up uh, the boys to play against them. But anyway, Joe was taking over. Since uh, Norm passed on, and uh, Joe's done a great job every year, uh, puts on a nice little show for every, everybody. And this year's July 3rd. It's going to start at 5 p.m. And, and the reason it's a little earlier this year than the fireworks that night, of course, you can have fireworks till 10 o'clock. So it'll be a five-hour program, maybe. I'll huh? get some booze down there and some weed. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they got four inductees. I'll let you, Joe, will talk about them. They're all worthy of it. But you know, one thing about it. After 35 years, I think you pretty much got about everybody in there you could. I know a few years back they were hard up for one. They put me in there, and I, God only knows why. But anyway, uh, it's, you've never been to one. Uh, if you got a few mo- few minutes for some entertainment, these guys play hard. Uh, ball players from the area baseball teams get together from Morley Stanwood, uh, Chippewa Hills, Big Rapids, I believe, Reed City, Joe? No, not Reed City. Oh, not Reed City. Good. That's all in across the county then. Let's well, Macosta well, go ahead, County Joe. area. Yeah. Go ahead and talk about it, Joe. Yeah, it's a Macosta County area sports hall of fame uh, slash old timers game Monday, July third, five PM at Hemlock Park. Uh, it's That's gonna a, be a change, right? It was that an industrial or something? Yeah, yeah. for thirty four years it was at Hemlock and then oh, okay, gotcha. of the construction. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. And they're Jake Walston and the city guys are really getting it shaped yeah, up. Yeah. No, the park's looking good. And uh and the reason Pat got inducted, number one, was he's been so involved and healed. I'm not sure. There's different titles. <laughs> Mix of both, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's different titles Pat gets. But uh, this year, um, the, the inductees are Bob Smith. Um, Bob graduated, I believe, in like 62. I'm going to say he was probably one of the best athletes Big Rapids has ever had. 
six five two thirty. Mm-hmm. Run the hurdles and track. I don't hum hurdles. Sprints with Jimmy Robinson, Jimmy Safoulis, and uh, him and Ralph Johnson. I think they held okay. for three state records. And anyway, uh, he played at CMU, played in the military too. Okay. Come back. He got a full ride scholarship in basketball and football and played his freshman year at Central Michigan. Got, I'm not sure if he got drafted, joined the service, but he came back and played on the first undefeated team. Very nice. Yep. Sally Schaefer, uh, uh, Chippewa Hills coach for many years. Um, I won't go through all. She's got history. I mean, records and stuff, too. Jim Turner, uh, uh, many of you know he umpires here for years. His dad is one of them that started it. He's been on our committee for years and years to help out. Our athlete played at Big Rapids High School, played at Ferris, and then after that, he had chances to... Uh, playing in the USFL. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. I yeah, know Jeff. I didn't know uh, I had that kind of a background. It's great. Yes. Yeah. He played on the Big Rapids Brewers. Which right. Okay. Some of us. Because he has a TNT gym now. It's his yes. business. He runs a TNT gym. And still he, like he said, he kind of gimps around now. The athletics wasn't, well, yeah. yeah, it took its toll. So, but anyway, it, it's really a good time. Basically, for you folks that don't know what it is, the old-timers uh, form a team. Now, there's no fast-pitcher men anymore, per, pretty much. So we have the local high school girls are in one uh, Ferris pitcher that's going to pitch, and we fast-pitch against the area high school team. And like Pat said, Morley Stanwood, Chip Hills, and, uh, and we fast pitch against them. They slow pitch against us. So okay. it's, it's it's really a lot of fun to watch those girls pitch against their classmates, so to right. speak. Okay. So that's probably what makes it about as fun as everything. There you go. There's a lot of people I want to thank, but I won't go through that today. No. I know we're running short. But. We're running real short. We only got two minutes. So I'm trying to hurry. <laughs> He'll want the third half hour here. So, yeah. And. Anyway, I appreciate it. Everybody come out Monday, July 3rd, 5 p.m. You get to hear Pat announce the game. And yep. Bob's going to help us with the you Put some, some music in there. Set up get some get organ some music, music. To, yes. <laughs> between the innings and things like that. A lot of people do don't know their local radio stations used to broadcast. The, oh, the whole thing live. The yeah. whole game. Yeah. So I appreciate it, everybody. And you bet. I girl. wanted to tell you something here if we got a minute. You bet. Go ahead, Fred. You know, Joe was asking me how long I had that supervisor's job. Yeah. And uh, one of the first things I ever did, the first meeting I ever went to, I was performed by the, the township board that I didn't have to listen to any of these people I wanted. Mm. And I said, well, I just want to tell you something. That ain't the way things are going to be. And Pat, it never was. No, and sir. you can go out in that township right yet today. The people was there when I had that job will tell you that. Yeah. No. And I got to tell you another two things before I leave. Yeah. But, uh... Huh? Clint? Got Summer? to Judson's Red Fox store. Right. Yeah. You know, I was in there one day and... <laughs> All these holes. Mm -hmm. Clint, he asked me what that was all about. I said, well, I back in days gone by when he come here and bought a horse harness or a case of dynamite or whatever you wanted. It was all hay ropes coming out of them holes, different sizes. Really? Yeah. You want a you want a hundred foot of hay rope to put in the barn to unload your hay with? Her off there and took a jack hunting knife or whatever and cut her off. Home you right. went. Yeah. Then I gotta tell you another good story. You bet. He was mentioned about my uncle there. You know, supposedly he had a whiskey still years ago, back in the prohibition days down there behind the barn there in the alcohol. And grandmother <clears throat> I don't know if this would have been Father Ben, but some priest from right down here to St. Mary's come out there and uh, 
was supposed to help him do something. I guess the story goes he he ended up taking this priest back there at the Alcohol Springs and I guess anything when they came back. <laughs> <laughs> you know Oh Lord, them were the a, days, weren't they? He was a very nice man. Yeah, I bet he was getting and the priest I, he drunk. was. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing about it. He uh Supposed to hitchhiked up here from Detroit in 1929 when the streetcars were out of business. Right. Wow. Tough back in them days. You didn't have a lot. No, right. Yeah. People were better, though, weren't they? Huh? Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all maybe. depends all right. on bad how you yeah. look at that system. Yeah. Yeah, we had more characters back then. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now they're of legend. So that's why I remember yeah. them fondly. Yeah. Well, anyway, Bob, we're going to let you go. I uh, hope right. you enjoyed you. our hour oh, and a yeah, half. That's great, you know. Old timers game coming up. Hope to see you there. Uh, Penn's Oil and Seth Winger and uh, Bab Ford, which unfortunately won't be for long now, but uh, what, another month and they'll be done. Yep. But then a new regime comes in, so it'll still be on. Service department and all there, yep. Bab Ford. The traditional good service and sales will still be there. So good deal. Uh, let's play. Uh, what song you want to hear? Well, I got to get out. Now. I got to get these spots going. So all right, get them. <laughs> yeah. I got to do that, but we know we'll, we'll play the theme here going out. See you, Bobby. Thanks. Thanks. Yep.